Potential DPOY, Mikhail Bridges just had 27 points on 9 for 18 shooting, including two triples, two steals, and 50 minutes of patented lockdown defense. Mikhail's clamps were on point, Devin Booker scored a game-high 31, and Aaron Holiday was a game-high plus 13. Considering GM James Jones received a legit third-string guard in Holiday from the Wizards in exchange for only cash considerations, this 2022 Suns team is set up for success even if the injury-prone Chris Paul gets hurt again during the playoffs. CP3 set to return from a fractured thumb on his shooting hand earlier than his previously expected April 3rd return date, but this video displays why surrounding Chris, the Phoenix Suns' young core is more intimidating than ever before, but will it be enough to get fans in the Valley the revenge they've been longing for? Stay tuned to see whether or not the windows open for D-Book Suns to achieve the ultimate glory this June. Just 10.2% of my audience is subscribed, so if you haven't done so, be sure to press subscribe and turn on notifications so you're updated on the ins and outs of the NBA. Also, please leave a thumbs up. It takes a few seconds and makes a massive difference. You can follow me on Instagram and Twitter at DeepFlowHoops, and I'll follow you back. Link is down below in the description for those two platforms. My hometown Raptors won the title a few years ago, and while in terms of their regular season success and roster, this Suns team is completely different than that Raps team three years ago, there's a few slight similarities between the 2022 Suns and 2019 Raptors that I'm seeing right now. In their respective seasons, both teams ranked top 5 in net rating, as well as offensive and defensive rating, with Phoenix ranking top 2 in each of those advanced stats. From a general perspective, Suns fans, just like Raptor fans could a few years ago, have an extreme and rightful confidence that their team's going to win on any given night, regardless of the caliber team they're facing. The other slight similarities that Phoenix shares with the 2019 champs is their depth positions 1 through 5, and more importantly, their abundance of mid-range shooting and premier perimeter defense. At 100% health, with Jay Crowder, Torrey Craig, Cameron Johnson, and a man with a solid case for the Defensive Player of the Year award in Mikhail Bridges, locking up opposing wing and backcourt players shouldn't be an issue for those laterally quick, versatile small forwards. The 2019 Raptors could match that with an all-time great two-way player in Kawhi Leonard and the all-star caliber Pascal Siakam, but while Kyle Lowry's the Raptor GOAT, that team certainly didn't have the talent in the backcourt or at the center position like this current 58-win Suns team does. Devin Booker's case for being the NBA's best shooting guard is a very good one, with how he fueled the Suns to the 2021 Finals with 27 point per game averages last summer, and how he's followed that up in 2022 by ranking top 10 in scoring, even when he isn't required to play a ton of fourth quarters with how Phoenix runs up the score so often. Booker's three-point efficiency has vamped significantly from last year as well, but it's how the two-time All-Star is contributing on the other side of the court, which has been most noteworthy. As the top scorer, and despite CP3 being on the squad, realistically, the biggest alpha male on the team at this point is Devin Booker, so everyone's looking at him when things get rough. That's why the scoring assassin D-Book, ranking number one among all shooting guards in defensive rating by far, ahead of the second-ranked Jordan Poole of Golden State, has been massively overlooked amidst this beastly Suns campaign. Booker can get over-aggressive at times, but the King of the Valley being engaged on that end in the first place sets a tremendous example for the four other guys sharing the court with him at all times. Speaking of setting a defensive tone, now for an in-depth look at the best team in the association's most valuable 3 and D guy. Here's what coach Monty Williams had to say about Mikhail Bridges after his dominant showing in an overtime battle against the scrappy new look Sacramento Kings. Should be defensive player of the year, number one. He doesn't duck a matchup. He plays every night. He guards everyone, plays 50 minutes, still produces on offense. I don't get into the Iron Man thing. I just, I think the young man loves to play. He loves to work and he, he's, he's a winner. I mean, when you look at what he did at Villanova, he's doing the same thing here, just on a much bigger stage. And he guards the toughest guys every single night without a blink. And everybody in that locker room appreciates what he does every single night. But I'll say it again, he should be defensive player of the year. Cause he, he's guarding it. He's guarding guys from the outside in, you know, that is really hard to do. You know, the, the guys that come to mind are like Michael Cooper, Ron Artest, Metal World Peace, um, Alvin Robertson. Those guys did it every night and he's, he's just like that. 
Just like Coach Monty said, the man guards any position, which includes the quickest and most dominant point guards. In all 72 games for the team with the NBA's best record by far, Mikhail's passing lane instincts, weak side, and overall rotations have been the driving factor for the Suns ranking second among all 30 teams in defensive rating. We're all wishing Steph Curry a speedy recovery, just like Chris Paul, but Steph's efficiency in November was much better than any month of his 2022 season, and it's no coincidence his slump began directly after facing the relentless defensive chops of Mikhail Bridges in back-to-back -back games. A November 30th game against Golden State, albeit in a loss, saw Mikhail hold the MVP favorite at the time in Steph Curry to 4 of 21 shooting from the field. In terms of Mikhail's chances to win Defensive Player of the Year, based off the fact that he's played all 72 games for a team with a historically great winning percentage and the best team defense among any of the top DPOI contenders, the Villanova alumni more than deserves that hardware. As a Wildcat, Bridges won two NCAA championships, winning the Big East Defensive Player of the Year in 2017 and Big East Tournament MVP the next year. One of the best players in school history, four years later, and now Mikhail's rounding into not only one of the best defenders in franchise history, but with his 7'1 wingspan combined with his quick reactions and lateral quickness, Bridges could be rounding into an all-time versatile defender. Just like Mikhail, Aaron Holiday is in the prime of his career at age 25, and while he's in a much smaller role than Bridges, the man's been extremely impactful on the Suns' recent success without Chris Paul and at times Cameron Payne. One of three Holiday brothers in the NBA, Aaron's flashing some resemblance of his brother Drew with his ability to manage the pace of the game and then drop dimes. But Aaron's far from a pure passer, as the month of March has seen the most recent trade steal for James Jones average 7.5 points, 1.2 steals, over 11 games. Considering he's also averaging 4.2 dimes, that makes Aaron a complete offensive point guard, and for a player who's still far from age 30, I see a ton of untapped potential with this man, but whether it's a top 5 center in DeAndre Ayton, likely the best two guard in basketball Devin Booker, or the premier lockdown defense and developed offensive game of Bridges, who's the Suns most intriguing young talent in your opinion? Best answer down below in the comments section gets next video shout out on the Reset Speaks board. Two shout outs next video, but the top five commenters with the most shout outs from my spring giveaway are Ken Saluto, Ona Ebodaga, Devin Sedoto, Boston Haltain, and Irvin Alexar Guerra. Those five dedicated commenters receive free NBA merchandise of their choosing, so leave your handle in the comments section if you won, and I'll message you with more details. I just wanted to say a big thank you to TrickShotIt, who was right there in the race, and everyone who got on the speaks board. This was DFlow. I hope you have a great one, and I'll see you next video.